Good afternoon, my name is Pau Ferreira. I'm a postdoc in, in the group of uh, Professor Gerhard uh, Rempe. And uh, yes, I, I come from Barcelona. I did my PhD there and joined the group as, as a postdoc uh, one year ago. And uh, now we are in a, in, a, in a lab where we do experiments uh, between which combine two topics, the, the topic of uh, cavity uh, QED and the topic of quantum uh, information yeah, within the division, the quantum dynamics division of Professor Gerhard uh, Rente. So a simple uh, way to see the experiments that we are uh, doing is that we are studying uh, the interaction between uh, single particles of, of light and single uh, atoms. And uh, the way we uh, make this uh, interaction uh, strong is by uh, placing uh, two mirrors which uh, surround the the atom and this kind of forms what we call an optical uh, cavity in such a way that when the photon gets inside these uh, two mirrors uh, it bounces back and, and forth and this enhances the interaction between the, the single photon and, and the single atom. So yeah, these are very fundamental experiments which uh, uh, where you can study the interaction between yeah, single photons and, and single uh, atoms and Professor Gerard Rempe already uh, did some pioneering ex experiments in, in the 1980s in, uh, together with uh, Professor Herbert uh, Walter, a former MPQ director. Uh, but the, the idea that we are doing currently in this lab is to, to, um, um, to use this uh, cavity QED platform for quantum information uh, experiments. So what we are uh, studying uh, is to, to, yeah, to use this uh, platform with a strong photon-atom interaction to implement novel quantum information uh, protocols. And uh, the idea with quantum information is that you encode uh, information in quantum uh, particles. For instance, for a single uh, photon, you can say that uh, state zero corresponds to when the electric field uh, is oscillating horizontally and uh, state uh, one, for instance, when the electric field is oscillating vertically. And for single atoms, we can also encode uh, such, yeah, such uh, bits. We can, for instance, uh, say that a state zero corresponds to when the a spin of the electron is pointing up, pointing direction upwards, and uh, state one corresponds to when the spin of the electron is pointing in the direction uh, downwards. And uh, the point with when you encode uh, information in such quantum systems is that you can use the uh, superposition uh, principle in such a way that you don't have only states uh, 0 and 1, but you can have a superposition of uh, these uh, two different uh, states. And the idea is that this superposition that you have in these bits of uh, information allow for uh, things which are not possible with classical uh, information. Uh, for instance, in, in the field of cryptography, it allows to, to distribute messages with a, a more secure way. And in the field of computation, it allows to, to have uh, some computational algorithms which are uh, much more efficient than the ones which are possible to achieve uh, classically. Uh, so yeah, this, is, this type of encoding of information is something that we are doing in this lab. And we are particularly interested in, in into, uh, the combination of encoding information in photons and information in, in atoms because then we can combine the go good properties of these two types of encoding. So for uh, quantum information encoded in, in photons, uh, this is very good to, to distribute the, the information because yeah, photons uh, can travel through long uh, distances. And uh, when we encode uh, information into single atoms, uh, then single atoms are good to store and process this uh, quantum information, so to, to perform computational uh, tasks on, on this information. So by, by this platform where we have this uh, interaction between uh, single photons and single atoms, we can combine this uh, communication with uh, computation capabilities of, of quantum uh, information. Um, so yeah, this is a bit how uh, this system typically looks like in, in our group. So we have uh, single atoms surrounded by uh, some uh, mirrors with a size of around one centimeter or, or so. This is how traditionally the, the setups in, in our group uh, look like. But in this experiment, this is a very new uh, experiment where we have a new uh, generation of optical uh, cavities. So in this case, the optical cavities are based on fibers. These are uh, some cavities that we uh, manufacture here at, at MPQ. And uh, the idea what we are doing is to uh, shoot 
some powerful laser on the tip of an optical uh, fiber in such a way that it gives the fiber a tip, a curve uh, structure and uh, then we coat this fiber tip with a high reflective material and this, uh, with this we can form these uh, optical uh, cavities. And having these uh, cavities uh, based on fibers, they, they um, have some nice uh, properties. Uh, the first one is that we can achieve a much smaller uh, radius of, of curvature with this manufacturing technique and lead, this needs to a, a stronger confinement of the electric field of the photons and then to a stronger uh, photon-atom interaction. Uh, the second interesting property is that the light emitted by the atom is directly coupled into an optical fiber and then it's good for, for uh, networking. And the third and most important property is that since uh, fibers have a small extension, in this case yeah, around 100 uh, micrometers, uh, then what we can do is to have uh, two uh, cavities coupled to the single uh, atom. And actually what we are doing in this experiment is to explore novel uh, quantum information uh, protocols which are, are based on a single atom coupled to these two uh, cavity uh, modes. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is what we are doing in, in this uh, lab. Uh, as you can see, we have two, um, this experiment consists of two optical tables, uh, this one at the beginning and, and the other one at, at the end. The first one, we are uh, using it to generate the light that we uh, use in this uh, experiment and uh, then we send this light to the other table where we have the single atom uh, trap uh, set up. Um, yeah, so we can start by uh, seeing what we have in this uh, first uh, table. Yes, I should actually switch on the lights. Um, yes. As you see, this optical table is full of uh, optical components, also full of uh, cables, and there are also some blue uh, boxes. So these uh, blue boxes are actually the, the uh, lasers which uh, generate this, uh, uh, the light. And then what <coughs> we are doing with this light is like we are directing it through uh, here, for instance, and then this light is separated into different uh, beam uh, lines. And these beam lines, they are pretty much the, the same. The, um, in each of these beam lines, there is uh, these black boxes. These black boxes are AOMs, acoustoptical uh, modulators. And what they allow us is to, to uh, change the frequency and the amplitude of the uh, light in a time scale of around 10 uh, nanoseconds. And moreover, this <coughs> control is done by electrical signals, which are controlled by our computer air and, and electronics. So yeah, then we can remotely uh, control the, the amplitude and the frequency of the laser uh, light. And then after yeah, the, the frequency and amplitude is modified, then this light is coupled into optical fibers and then directed to the other uh, table where we have the atom uh, set up. So, uh, yeah, in, again, in this table you can see a lot of yeah, optics, but it's mostly uh, the same line repeated over and, and over again for the, for the different uh, lasers. But there is something else I would like to show in, in this table, which is in the, in the other side. And uh, this is this fiber over uh, here. So <coughs> from this fiber, uh, we have a, a source of light coming out, which is kind of uh, special. Uh, this is an optical frequency comb. This was developed by uh, MPQ director Professor uh, Henge. And yeah, it's one of the inventions that award him the, the Nobel uh, Prize. And, and this optical frequency comb is a source of light which uh, has very well defined um, uh, frequency components uh, with equal uh, spacing and which can be very accurately stabilized. And this is very important because in our experiment we need that the uh, lasers have a very uh, precise uh, frequency. 
So what we are doing is comparing the, the frequency of the light of our lasers with the frequency of uh, the frequency lines of this optical frequency comb, and then um, yeah, correcting the correcting the frequency light of our lasers according to 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 yeah to the lines of this optical frequency comb. So the optics that you see over here are optics where we are uh, combining the light of this optical frequency comb with the light of our uh, lasers. And yeah, so once we have the the light of our lasers uh, stable and and we have tuned the amplitude and the, the frequency of the different uh, laser beams, then we couple it into optical fibers and then move it to the second uh, table. So this is done through uh, these optical fibers, which uh, then go up the, the table and then they follow up to the uh, other uh, table where we have the single uh, atom. Okay, so we can move to, to this other uh, table. Okay, as you can see, this, this table is a bit uh, more full of, of optics and, and, and cables and, and electronics. Uh, but first of all, I would like to draw the attention onto this uh, metal uh, chamber that we have at the center of the, the table. So, uh, this is actually a, a vacuum uh, chamber and <coughs> where we have a high vacuum uh, conditions. We have a pressure of around 10 to the minus 10 uh, millibar. And uh, inside this chamber is where we aim to trap these uh, single atoms. And we need uh, such a high uh, vacuum conditions because we want that once our atom is uh, trapped that there is no particle colliding uh, with the atom, uh, which yeah, would either kick out the atom out of our trap or would change the, the state of, of the, the atom. So unfortunately at the moment we, we cannot see the inside of the vacuum chamber because it's surrounded by, by, by the different components. But over here we, we have a, a picture of uh, how it, such a vacuum chamber looks uh, inside. Uh, we can see yeah, some optics, some uh, holders, some antennas, some uh, the atomic source, but yeah, what I would like to focus the attention on is on, on the center of this uh, chamber where uh, we have, if we would zoom in, we would see uh, this picture over here. So this, we would see these four uh, optical fibers that I was speaking at the beginning, which form this uh, optical, uh, yeah, this double optical cavity, so with an intracavity region of around 100 uh, micrometers. So what we are aiming at is that <coughs> trapping a single atom uh, here at the center of these uh, cavities. And the way we do this is, is with a technique called optical uh, trapping. So for this we, we shine a laser uh, beam which is focused at the intracavity uh, region and in such a way that then the uh, single atom uh, would uh, get trapped at the region of uh, higher intensity of the beam, which yeah, corresponds to the center of the, of the uh, cavities. Uh, another important thing to, to keep the atom in, inside the trap is that it's at a very cold temperature, because if, if it would be uh, at yeah, standard temperature, at, at room temperature, uh, then it would have uh, too much kinetic energy such that it would uh, easily leave the, the trap. And for this, we use a technique which is called laser uh, cooling. So the way we uh, do it is we uh, start by cooling uh, a cloud of uh, atoms uh, one centimeter above the, the trap. We can see this in, in this picture over here. So here we can see the, the optical fibers and one centimeter above uh, we have some laser beams uh, coming which together with a, a magnetic field gradient they cool and trap around 10 to the 6 uh, atoms to, to a temperature of uh, around 100 micro degrees above the absolute uh, zero. So yeah, we cool this uh, cloud of atoms at, at this center region of, of the beams. And then once we have this uh, cloud of atoms, we switch off the, the laser beams, switch off the, the magnetic field trap, and then the atoms uh, fall on the intracavity uh, region. And at this point is when we switch on the, the, yeah, the, the laser uh, trap and we also uh, cool uh, the atom, yet yeah, to aim to trap a single atom 
in the center of the, the cavities. So uh, yeah, if, if medium uh, moves to the other side of the uh, table, then we can actually uh, see the <coughs> the optics which are involved in, in this process. Uh, we can see uh, over here the, the uh, mirrors which direct the light, which creates this uh, magnet-optical uh, trap one centimeter above the, the, the beams. We would have yeah, one here and one over there. Um, then Where exactly? Oh, here. <laughs> and the other one would be uh, over there. So yeah, this would uh, direct the light uh, towards yeah, this spot one centimeter above the, the fibers to, to laser cool this cloud of uh, atoms. Um, then we see here the optics, so which direct the beam to the center of the of the of the uh, fibers uh, in order to cool the single atom once we uh, trap trap it at the center of the intracavity uh, region. Uh, we can see here the beam, <coughs> which then goes to the also the center of the the cavities to to trap this. Uh, single uh, atom and if we look into the chamber uh, we can see that it's surrounded by some copper uh, cables so these copper cables are used to generate the magnetic field gradient which uh, confines uh, yeah, which helps trapping this uh, cloud of uh, atoms and uh, yeah, th there is much more uh, optics in in the table which I, I won't have the time to, to talk about but maybe um, something else I would like to show in in this table is this box over here so this is a, a camera which is very sensitive uh, and with which we can detect the light emitted by this uh, single atom once it's uh, trapped in the intracavity uh, region so yeah the light emitted by the single atom would follow uh, this path would go through some uh, lenses and then would be directed into this uh, camera and yeah this camera is then connected to to our computer and uh, we can observe the light emitted by this uh, single atom so at the moment we are not trapping any atom but uh, if medium comes to this side of the table uh, i can show in in our laptop how this would uh, look like <coughs> so yeah this is a video recorded by uh, such a camera in which you can see this uh, bright uh, spot so this would be the light emitted by a single atom and in this case the, the trap was being moved uh, left uh, and right and the, the atom was following the, the uh, trap in the last minutes I will briefly mention on, on the last projects that we uh, were involved in in these last uh, years um, so yeah, as I said, our goal is to, to use this uh, uh, to mode cavity QED experiment to explore uh, novel quantum information uh, protocols and, and so far we explored, uh, we developed two of such new uh, protocols. The, the first one is uh, passive heralded uh, quantum memory. So uh, what we call a quantum memory, a photonic quantum memory, is a device which uh, is able uh, to store a quantum state encoded in, in a photon. And um, this is an important device because, uh, similar to classical information, uh, in many situations you need to store the information in order to synchronize it uh, with the other processes or to use it at a different uh, time. So in this case, what, what we did is, yeah, we encode uh, a quantum bit of information into a single photon, and then this <coughs> bit of information would uh, interact with the single atom through one of the uh, cavities and in such a way that the quantum state of the photon would get transferred into the, the single uh, atom. So this is actually something which was developed uh, in our group already some, some years ago, but um, having the second cavity uh, allows for new possibilities. The first one is that this memory uh, protocol is uh, passive, it's completely passive, so the, um <coughs> the uh, we don't need any light field to, to store the, the photon into the atom. This is completely mediated by uh, this uh, second cavity. And the second thing is that the process is 
uh, heralded. So on on the while the uh, this photonic qubit is stored in the atom, there is another photon emitted by in the second cavity, which we can use to herald the success uh, storage of the initial uh, qubit. So yeah, having uh, such a herald signal uh, is important uh, because it tells us if the storage succeeded and then it can help us uh, to track errors on the storage and to improve the, the, the fidelity of uh, such uh, storage. And uh, yeah, at a later time we can then uh, map the, the quantum bit of information encoded into the atom uh, back into, into a single uh, photon. And um, well, without entering in, in too much detail, yeah, what allowed uh, this experiment is that yeah, we, we have one cavity in one atomic transition which is uh, compatible for the uh, uh, atom photonic qubit interaction, and we have the other cavity in another transition which is uh, compatible, uh, yeah, which is suitable for the transfer of the photonic quantum state into an atomic uh, superposition uh, stale while uh, obtaining uh, this herald uh, signal. So yeah, this is the, the first experiment that we did in, in such a setup, which was yeah, published a few months uh, ago. And yeah, in the last months we worked on a second experiment, and this is the non-destructive uh, detection <coughs> of a photonic uh, qubit. Um, so, um, yeah, in this case, what we are doing is we are encoding a photonic a qubit into a single uh, photon, and the, the goal is to detect uh, this photon without destroying the single photon or the encoded information in the in the in the photon. Uh, and this is important because yeah, one of the uh, big problems in quantum communication is that the uh, photonic uh, bits of information get easily lost because they are uh, fragile uh, objects, um, and this is very hard to 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 overcome. But however, if if you can track the the loss of these uh, photonic qubits by yeah, by detecting them without uh, destroying them, then you can mitigate this loss effect in in some uh, situations. So in this case, what we did is we directed photonic qubits into uh, our cavity, but in this case, the the photonic qubit was directly reflected by, by the cavity, but it was leaving a trace on uh, the single atom, and then this <coughs> trace could be later uh, detected by uh, means of uh, yeah, emitting a signal into the, the other uh, cavity. So speaking uh, a bit more in, in detail, what we did is yeah, by, by means of some microwave a radiation, we prepare the atom in a superposition uh, state, and then the interaction between the photonic qubit and, and the atom uh, created a phase shift on this uh, atomic state, which then we could later uh, detect by the interaction of the uh, second cavity with, with the uh, atom. So, so yeah, these are two, two um, new quantum information protocols which are possible with with um, with our uh, system with a single atom and and two cavities, which uh, which we, we developed in in the in the last uh, years and, and month, uh, for the future we, we would like to, to continue developing more uh, schemes uh, which are uh, enabled by by this uh, system. But yeah, in in the long term uh, future, what what we would like to uh, to see is to yeah to use this. Uh, interfaces between quantum states encoded in light and quantum states encoded in, in matter to, to, to be able to, to have uh, some uh, network similar to the uh, internet that, that we have but for, for quantum states and, and use it for, for applications on cryptography and, and uh, computation. So this is actually um, uh, the goal of uh, a project which is now going on, this quantum internet alliance within the, the quantum a flagship in, in which we are uh, part of. This is a Euro European project which aims at, at developing uh, such uh, nodes able to, to store and process uh, yeah, quantum information encoded in, in uh, photons. And uh, yeah, the experiments that we 
uh, demonstrated. Yeah, they could be uh, used either as, as nodes to store and, and process this information or to, to monitor the loss of, of photonic qubits uh, in such a network without destroying uh, these qubits with our non-destructive uh, photon qubit uh, detector. So yeah, this is um, uh, the long-term uh, goal, but as I said, in, in the meantime, uh, we would like to develop new quantum information protocols uh, which are uh, possible with this single atom coupled to these two, two cavities. Um, so yeah, with this I finish. Yes, I had a brief, brief uh, overlook of, of our lab and, and, yeah, and thank you for the virtual lab visit. Yes.